Hi, it's Andy Stevens from ESL. This is a brief walkthrough of our software for Subaru Turbos, Impreza Legacy and Forester from 89 to 98. So you've got your software, you've downloaded the zip file, you've unpacked it, then you've uh, run the setup file. Um, the first time you connect your ESL cable, make sure you're connected to the internet and the drivers should automatically then sort themselves out. Connect the diagnostic port into the car, turn the ignition on, and then go for connection, connect a car. It'll um, come up with a cable, um, unless it's an ESL cable, it won't connect. So we've got an ESL SSM cable there. Going to OK that. Um, bottom left hand side of the screen it says connecting, then tells you which map of the two it's connected to, and center bottom it tells you um, what sort of ECU it's detected, in this case ESL 1997 to 1998. So from here, you can see now that um, the parameter space has appeared in the top left of the screen. So these are all the ECU parameters you have available to you. There's an awful lot of them, so we've put them in a roll-up tree. So for example, if you hit the plus button by fuel, you'll get all the fuel parameters coming up. So if we try the fuel map, uh, it's a color map obviously, um, so it gives you some indication just by looking a bit how smooth or not smooth it is. You can expand it, move it around on the screen. Um, and the top tells you what the axes are, in this case engine speed versus engine load. So you can do the same with the ignition and boost up here. There, there is a tremendous amount of parameters, so you can roll those up and down as you please. We can look at the ignition base map. And we can look at the boost target map. We've got user views and we've got pages you can add here. So if the view becomes too cluttered, you can add a page. Then you can put other things in there that you like. You can add as many pages as you want. And you can add as many um, parameters as you wish. So there are the pages where if you're particularly happy with the view, you can hit user views, you can save that view. And the next time you load back up, you can reload the view and all these pages will reappear automatically. So coming back to here, um, to change some parameters, you can uh, select and type in directly. I'm not suggesting that these are good numbers. I'm just showing you how to alter it. You can also use page up and page down to increment. You can see here that it's writing down. If the number's purple, it hasn't yet written down. When it goes back to the color map, it's been written down and reread to verify the number's actually correct. You've got undo and redo buttons up here. So you can go all the way back if you've made a mistake. Or the other way, of course, you can do it is you can go to here, File, you can save the file, uh, give it a name. And then if at any point you want to just go back to this where you were, you just File, Load, just reload the file uh, that you saved to get back to any point. So you can always roll backwards and forwards quite easily. I should say this is connected to a bench ECU at the minute, so we are, although we're not actually connected to a car, we are actually connected to a live ECU on board. Okay, so if we look at the bottom left of the screen, this is data logger. So if we open this tree up, you can see there's various different um, channels you can log. Um, the bandwidth of the logger sorts itself out, so probably a good idea just to check the ones that you actually want to log. There's obviously a lot of them. And then as you're logging, I mean, you can do a couple of things with this. So if we try a throttle position, I have got a throttle pot attached um, to the ECU so we can play with that, although it's the only really uh, external source that is actually uh, attached to the ECU at the moment. So you've got three buttons here. This is play, play log, stop log, and save the log. So the green button plays the log. If you hit that, you see it starts to log in the bottom right-hand corner and gives you uh, an estimate of how long you've been logging. So now if I tweak the throttle pot a little bit, you can see it move, you can set maximums, minimums and limits and you can actually see the live trace on the boost map there as the throttle position goes up and down. If you, it gets uh, messy on the screen you want to clear the trace, it's just right, cl right click, clear trace and you're back to where you started again. You can stop the log, when you stop log you can hit the disk key 
and you can save the log. It will give it a name in terms of date and time and it's saved in CSV format so you can use it in any CSV viewer, something like um, Delta Dash or Excel or anything that can view CSV files basically. Save that away. Okay, um, what else do we have up here? Um, connection types, uh, various different options on the grid, user views, logging, help. One of the big helps that you can do is if you just go to our website uh, www.enduringsolutions.com and you go to resources, there's a manual and in the manual there is every single parameter has got a very detailed explanation uh, amongst other things. Um, but yeah, this is uh, an absolutely fantastic resource so you know exactly what each parameter does. Um, uh, you know all the information about it and you'll know the effect if you change it. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, I'll do some more videos soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.